Yeah, uh, I'm Maurizio Merigi. I am teaching architectural and urban design in uh, the School of uh, uh, Architecture and Urban Design uh, of Politecnico di Milano. Um, uh, and I'm belonging to the department, research department, uh, of uh, architecture, built environment, and construction engineering. So, uh, could you tell me about your research project about water and green structures? Well, uh, basically, uh, since my first interest uh, uh, was architecture and urban design, I approached uh, to this field of researches on the point of view of, let's say, um, uh, the wide scale problem, the huge scale. So the territorial problem of uh, uh, green structures uh, and also, of, let's say, uh, water networks. Uh, so my experience uh, started in this field, uh, collaborating with something like 50 other colleagues uh, coming from something like 20 European countries uh, uh, in an action that is called cost action. It's a European Union action that is devoted just to create network of people uh, sharing the same interests. Uh, and we exchanged about uh, the experience that we had in our countries concerning the relationship between uh, urban development, that is, uh, uh, let's say, the so-called grey structures, and the problem of maintaining and then developing the green structures. Um, so we analyzed several cases, we had meetings in several uh, cities of Europe, uh, each of one had a very interesting and unique experience uh, that was based uh, on the, let's say, the possibilities uh, uh, they had concerning the social problems, uh, the, the social structure, the uh, geographical structure, the cultural heritage they had, uh, uh, concerning uh, that and then the attitude they matured during uh, years or centuries uh, concerning how to, let's say, combine uh, urban development and uh, respect for the uh, natural environment. Uh, so, uh, uh, it was obvious that many, uh, almost all these uh, uh, let's say experiences uh, in Europe were based on the problem of uh, water. So, uh, water is, the, mm, is very easy to be understand, maybe it's very banal to say that is, uh, uh, water is the first uh, condition for life, you no know, water and no life. But then, th how to, let's say, relate with water. And then, so cities were, almost cities were built on water. So, so the water network is the base to understand the geographical network of cities and of cities development, uh, at least till a certain time. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, we have also problems that are concerning green areas that are referring to another point, that are the woodlands. Uh, woodlands can be in mountain areas, uh, but in riverbanks are fundamental and things like that. So, uh, in that experience, I, I mm, uh, let's say illustrated the case that we had in Lombardy, uh, in Lombardy region, that is uh, a system of uh, let's say river basin natural parks uh, that has uh, let's say um, a regional uh, scale and also a regional statement. So they have a sort of let's say power. Uh, they are based not on the idea of let's say conservation park because Lombardy has one of the most populated part of Italy uh, and so that the density can be compared to maybe to some regions in Japan or uh, or in China uh, inhabitants per square kilometer. So we are not speaking about natural parks like Yellowstone Park, we are speaking about green areas with rivers, uh, with uh, cultivated fields, uh, with uh, 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 canals for irrigation, even for, let's say, uh, energy production. Uh, we are speaking of, of an area where we have the airport of Malpensa, the main airport of Milan, that is in a woodland near this, uh, this uh, Ticino River. 
Uh, so, a very inhabited green space, green structures. Uh, nevertheless, uh, and very close to Milan, uh, during our economical boom in the 60s, uh, um, uh, the development of the city of Milan was really, let's say, uh, not under control. And so that, uh, what, what was very interesting that, let's say, the this sort of, let's say, uh, uh, free uh, development uh, starts to uh, dembore every year kilometers of uh, cultivated land transformed into buildable land, uh, woodlands, uh, and so that the Parco del Ticino experience is quite interesting because it started as a referendum from people. So they asked to sign. Uh, for the protection and for the establishment of a law that would, let's say, stop or at least control this development uh, and start it as, let's say, as a popular action. First of all, started from people. Then, there were good politicians in that time that were able to, let's say, transfer these, uh, let's say, issues coming from the people and transform this into, find also the let's say, the management system uh, and management uh, idea that was a, a free collaboration between municipalities, uh, voluntarily um, sharing master plan and guidelines for, let's say, uh, control the development of this green area that has as a heart a blue area, that is uh, the river Ticino, that is uh, one of the main let's say, river uh, affluences on River Po, that is the main river of Padendian Plain. And then after that experience, uh, something within 15 years, uh, some other, let's say, 10 parks of the same, uh, let's say, with the same idea, with the same principle were established. And so it started to be uh, an action that is at least coordinated. And it is what is, I think, is very interesting, is that is coordinating on, let's say, a natural structure Natural structures are the river, let's say, flowing from the Alps. They create the main, let's say, skeleton of this uh, structure. Then the different, let's say, parks are just following this natural, uh, uh, geographical and, uh, uh, let's say, um, territorial scale structure. So that was to say why, why and to what I'm interested. Uh, because this is the base also on which was created urbanization. And so this is the relationship between these two, let's say, structures. It is extremely interesting for me. And I think it's important, important to teach architectural design at the end because we are always uh, building somewhere. We are not building ideally or in the sky. So our, let's say, uh, let's say even if it is very small, the footprint, the ecological footprint on any building, of any part of the city, uh, is in any case depending on an architectural design. And so that how to teach um, this, uh, uh, this relationship, how to have this attention to this understanding of what's happening is extremely important. Thank you. So, and um, could you tell me your ambitions and you, what you would like to do in the future, for, for the future, uh, from the perspective of sustainability and architecture and your field? So, since um, many years, uh, I could say maybe it's already nearly uh, 18 years, I decided to, let's say, organize all my researches around one, let's say, slogan, that is, the green city. I am referring to, uh, let's say, on the scientific point of view, to the fact that uh, the history of architecture, as we teach in university, has, in a certain sense, uh, an imbalance uh, to the uh, uh, known green city. So almost the samples are coming from city architecture. So there are many experiences uh, that it's difficult to fit in the history of architecture. That is, in a certain sense, like to for mm, for a, a student of medicine, is a, it is anatomy. So you you need to know what is a human body. So architecture is the history of architecture. It is the experience that is uh, you have. We have some thousand years. 
let's say, overlapping one generation by one generation. And I could notice that there are some experiences uh, that are totally ignored. So uh, I started with uh, some project uh, in the that were made in the areas around the uh, uh, French Revolution in Europe, uh, when there was a, a debate uh, between, let's say, architects uh, who already were working for a real, let's say, uh, mm, let's say, uh, official uh, client, the king or the state, uh, for uh, about how to develop uh, the country. And there was a debate in between the so-called, uh, let's say, um, those who was for standing the idea that the city has to be the center of pro production and then the de de development, uh, economic, uh, would depend on development of cities. And another part of architects, one of these is very famous, uh, uh, Ledoux, a French architect, the so-called revolutionary architect, uh, who was exactly, uh, let's say, for standing the other position, saying, no, this, let's say, revolution, this, let's say, development would start by reorganizing the countryside. So we don't need cities necessarily for development. We can also have the countryside. And he made a lot of projects uh, designing how to urbanize countryside. It's a bit contradiction of terms, uh, urbanization that is related to urban, to city and countryside let's say, how to structurize more uh, efficiently countryside uh, as a living place, uh, uh, not as the periphery of a city, but as being a, a center. Uh, so that I start to collect uh, other experiences following, let's say, this uh, line. And then I found a lot of projects. Uh, and then arriving to, let's say, project made uh, in the... Uh, uh, so the very uh, in the same time of uh, uh, Ledoux project, uh, also one of the first president of the United States of America was an architect, Thomas Jefferson, made a project of development of urbanization of the United States that was not based on cities but was based on company towns that were distributed all over the land. So his idea was not to have a, a network of big cities, but a very a network, very, let's say, dense, of uh, medium, small sized cities. Uh, then, uh, on the base of this idea, we had some other very important samples uh, during the 30s in the United States. Uh, that was the Tennessee Valley Authority experience. Uh, also, they were, let's say, controlling water, so something that refers to water and environment control, uh, together with uh, the development of cities. cities forms, other forms of cities, so the Green City. And then Green City was exactly the title of a competition that was held in uh, Moscow in 1930, uh, where was asked to design a city for, uh, a resort city, but for uh, 100,000 people that could, let's say, spend some days uh, moving from the very grey Moscow to the very green city. Uh, then, on the base of this, I created a sort of, let's say, started to collect a kind of little atlas of experiences, uh, of, uh, let's say, experiences in architecture that are, are not based on the idea of the city, but on the idea of this urbanized countryside. And recently, let's say 10 years ago, uh, by chance, uh, I met uh, that this form of development uh, was lasting in China uh, since centuries, maybe uh, since uh, even the, uh, let's say, at least the earliest dynasties. And uh, it has a form that the historians and then the scholars called urban rural continuum. And this structure was surviving, incredibly, until the age of reforms. Just after the age of reform in the 80s, uh, with, let's say, the introduction of liberalism in, uh, in China in some experimental area, the special economic zone, then this idea of the urban-rural continuum started to fail. So villages were abandoned, uh, first of all, because people were moving to cities. Uh, and since they are made with a technology that is very, that is very, very, let's say, sustainable, because they are made with uh, earth, clay houses, uh, uh, 
very efficient on the point of view of let's say uh, uh, of let's say uh, climate control because uh, 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 they can work perfectly without ventilation because they have natural ventilation and that depends on let's say the mass of the earth uh, that make fresh the air and then also protect uh, then start to, by having this very uh, let's say weak technology, when you are, they are abandoned, they start to go back to the earth in a certain sense, thanks to the, to the weather. They just melt. Uh, uh, so that uh, studying this subject, uh, by more or less by chance, because of a consultancy required by, uh, thanks to an agreement between our government and the Chinese administration, um, we understood and I discovered this new world, this new green city, to add to my, let's say, uh, atlas. But the very basic difference, it is based on other philosophical idea. So it's not belonging to Western culture. It is belonging to, let's say, Chinese Eastern culture that has other principles uh, of planning, uh, of organizing uh, space. Uh, it just is another culture. So uh, my ambition, keep on finding this kind of opportunities and then have the possibility to, let's say, uh, share uh, this knowledge with other people.